ladies and gentlemen, today we're back at Hash Event in Korea and we have Do Kwon, the co-founder and co-engineer at Terra. How are you Do Kwon? It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what is Terra? Yeah, Terra is a price stable cryptocurrency that is uh, slated to be the next generation payment method in e-commerce co companies in Asia. So right now we have about $15 billion of GMB from our early partners and we're expanding that to about um, well, much more than that, hopefully, within the next few months. What would you say is the core problem that Terra is trying to solve? Yeah, so we have a lot of decentralized crypto assets, but the problem here is that none of them are actually being used for real transactions. So Ethereum was really helpful for the bull market in 2017 in the sense that it became a very useful tool for fundraising. But uh, sort of the incentive mechanisms and the uh, lack of price stability of these crypto assets meant that uh, they became unusable for everyday transactions. We want to solve that problem by bringing price stability into crypto assets. What is the utility and function behind the Terra token? Yeah, so unlike other cryptocurrencies uh, which have a fixed monetary policy, uh, the Terra blockchain expands and contracts the money supply uh, of the coin uh, in order to keep it price stable to fluctuating user demands. So this means that when a user gets, when a merchant gets paid in Terra, he, he can hold on to Terra tokens with the full promise that it's going to retain its value in the short term. And consumers can pay Terra tokens with the full, uh, with the full confidence that the price isn't going to increase or decrease in the short term as well. And we see that there are multiple um, stable coins that are coming out this year, such as Base Coin, Tether, and Koala, and so on. How is Terra uh, different from other stable coins? Yeah, so the short answer here is that Terra, to the best of our knowledge, is the only stablecoin that is safe from both regulators and speculators. To clarify a little bit, what I mean by this is, uh, you have centralized asset-backed coins like base, uh, like uh, Tether or True USD, that open a bank account and deposit real-world assets in order to defend the stability of the coin. This is untenable in the long term because real-world assets could be seized by regulators or shut down by governments. Or you have coins like MakerDAO, which have decentralized third-party assets like Ethereum. But this is susceptible to margin calls or generally cratering of the economy in cases in which the price of Ethereum falls. Or you have the third approach like Basecoin, in which the blockchain government uh, without any sort of sovereign enforcement issues bonds that it never intends to pay back. So ultimately the differentiating factor about Terra is that it makes a guarantee of solvency by keeping a, a decentralized reserve that is guaranteed to be as sizable as the size of the circulating Terra economy. What would you say is the roadmap look like for Terra in 2018? Yeah, so our payment gateway and uh, plugin integrations with uh, our early e-commerce partners is slated to finish around the end of Q3. And our protocol is going to have some pretty interesting announcements around that time as well. So this is something that's definitely happening in 2018. So look forward to that. Perfect. And lastly, what do you think about this event hosted by Hash? Do you like it? Uh, it's awesome. The Hash guys are really great. I, I think it's uh, something fundamentally exciting about bringing uh, investors and uh, developers and entrepreneurs from so many different places together uh, to talk about blockchain and talk about crypto assets. And hopefully they're going to be talking a lot about stablecoins after this. Since Mr. Block is a Taiwanese community, will we ever see uh, Terra present in Taiwan? Absolutely. Look forward to it in Q2. Perfect. It's really nice to meet you.